Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Codenetics and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this problem, problem G, even odd XOR. This is from the one of the recent Code Forces contests, round 817 from the Division 4 contest. Um, and, or it was a Division 4 contest, sorry. And it's got a really short problem statement, but I think it's a very interesting problem. So let's take a look. So it says, given an integer n, find an array a of n distinct non-negative integers less than 2 to the power of 31, such that the bitwise XOR of all the elements on odd indices equals the bitwise XOR of all the elements on the even indices. So we have t test cases where t is less than 629. t lines follow. Each contains a single integer n, the length of the array. It's guaranteed that the sum of n over all test cases does not exceed 2 to the power of 5. Now you want to print n distinct integers less than 2 to the power of 31. Okay, this is cool. So let's take a look at this sample input. We've got seven test cases here, 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, like that. Um, but here we go. So I'm going to ignore 8, because, or I'm going to start off with 8, sorry. Uh, because I'm going to ignore the rest of these because they're it's just repetition. So let's start off. So we have t lines follow, each containing a single integer n, the length of the array. And it's guaranteed that the sum of over all test cases does not exceed 2 times 10 to the power of 5. So that's just like the basic, this is the array. Okay, and then we've got the rest of the array. So let's analyze the test case where we have 8. So we have 4, 2, 1, 5, 0, 6, 7, 3. Right, so we've got, or I, I said I'd do n equals 5, so we're going to start off with n equals 5. When we have n equals 5, one of the solutions is 2, 0, 4. Five, three. So let's just confirm here. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know what the XOR is, it's the, um, let me just take a look here, the bitwise XOR is essentially one of the basic bit operations which allows you to there's no good table so I'll just draw one it essentially if you have a which is 1 or 0 and then b which is 1 or 0 and this is for every bit that's why it's called bitwise um, then if a is 1 and b is 1 this is 0 if a is 0 and b is 0 this is 0 and otherwise it's 1 um, that's kind of the table um, that's what the bitwise XOR does if you don't have a lot of experience with the bitwise XOR, this, is, this will be a little bit of a tricky problem for you. So I'd recommend taking a look at some easier XOR problems. If you do have a little bit of experience with XOR but you were still struggling with this problem, that's great because this is going to show you exactly how we can approach this problem. So I have 20453. Um, now here's the thing. I want the even and the odd positions to be the same. So that means this position, this position, this position, when you XOR, or actually let me do this in a different color. So we've got this position, this position, and this position when you XOR should be equal to, should be equal to, that's just the same color, this position and this position when XORed. So let's pull up um, idle here. Um, so we've got, uh, the numbers that we've got are, 2, 0, 4, 5, and 3. So 2, 4, and 3. So let's take a look. So let's suppose we did 2, XOR 4, XOR 3. Okay, um, and sorry about the tapping noises. I'm using a different set of microphones. So um, it will, it, the, the noises will be there. Um, but here we have uh, the three numbers, this little caret operation is the XOR operation. Get familiar with it because we're going to be using it um, in our code. So 2 XOR 4 XOR 3 is going to be 5. Um, and 0 XOR 5 is going to also be 5. So they're equal and that's good. Um, one thing that's crucial here, which we will be using in our solution, is to note that 0 XOR any number is that number itself. Um, and we'll be using that to handle the odd case. Um, or actually, there's two solutions to this problem. Um, I'm going to show one of the solutions first, um, which will be the solution I implemented in the contest, and then I'll show the much simpler solution. 
um, and I'll only code up the much simpler solution. Okay, so we have 2, 0, 5, 4, 5, and 3. And so we want to somehow get to this. So for the time being, I'm going to actually erase this 2, this 0, this 4, this 5, and this 3. And remember, there's multiple correct solutions. Um, so there's not just one right solution. Okay, so 2, 0, 4, 5, 3. But we want to get there somehow. Okay. Let's suppose that we only handled the even case, right? The even case for and for, for each a sub i greater than 0. Then we could just stick a 0 in there. We could just stick a 0 in here, and we'd be good to go, because 0 x or anything is not 0. So that immediately off the bat takes off the odd case. So we're going to ignore the odd case, and now we just have to figure out how to do n equals 4. Um, so to figure out how to do n equals 4, what I noted in contest is I could just go through and set this to be 1, this to be 2, if I had more 3, 4, etc., etc., and then set this one right here to be 1 plus something really large, and 2 plus something really large, and 3 plus something really large. And I'd have to fit, you have to fiddle around with what this really large is, but if you get the really larges <laughs> correct, then you end up having the really larges will XOR out with each other, these ones will XOR out with each other, we're good. Um, and one thing that I should probably clarify is when I say really large, I mean plus 2 to the power of something really large. I'm going to using infinity here. Um, the reason is, since it's a bitwise operation, we don't want to have anything interfering with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so I chose a really large number. So let's take a look at what that would look in terms of bits. So suppose we're, we did this alternating, and then I did 1 plus 2 to the power of, say, in this case, uh, 19. 1 plus, or 2 plus 2 to the power of 19. Something like this. Right? Da, 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 da. Um, and suppose I was considering, I don't know, 7 plus 2 to the power of 19. What would this look like in terms of bits? This would look like 1, 0, dot, 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 1, or, or 0, 1, 1. And so this right here would be 19 digits long. Um, and you might be wondering, sorry, there should be an extra one there. Uh, you might be wondering, how do I know it's 19 digits long? Why isn't it more? Um, or bits long? Because 7 and actually anything 10 to the power of 5, 10 to the power of 6, I believe, or less, is going to be less than 2 to the power of 19. And we can verify that with idle. So let's pull up idle here. Again, this is why it's always important to just have something like idle. So 2 to the power of 19 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so not less than 10 to the power of 6, it's less than 5 times 10 to the power of 5. So anything less than 5 times 10 to the power of 5 is less than 2 to the power of 19. Okay. And we know that we're only going to have this 7, which in this case is actually going to be like 1, 2, 3, all the way to uh, 2 times 10 to the power of 5, or 10 to the power of 5. That's going to be less than 2, 2 to the power of 19. So we're good. Okay, this might not make a lot of sense. So let's consider it. Let's abstract it here. Let's suppose that we're considering one of these values, suppose n, suppo or suppose k. Suppose we're considering the kth even one, so the kth blue one. We know that the kth blue one is going to be k plus 2 to the power of 19. But we also know that k is less than 2 to the power of 19. So the 2 to the, to the 19th bit in k is going to be 0. So the way that I'd represent this is um, b sub 19 of k is equal to 0. This is just like a notation I came up on the spot. Um, so don't actually use this in any proofs or anything. Um, but b sub 19 of k is equal to 0, so that means that this plus 2 to the power of 19 is going to set that to be 1. So b sub 19 of k plus 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 1. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just flipping a bit up there. That's it. Just, just flipping a bit. Okay? Um, and so that ensures that these are all much larger than... 10 to the power of 5, um, much, much larger. And so we'll never have any collisions there. Because remember, we want distinct non-negative integers. 
So now what, what I have to address is the fact that in the case of 4, this works out really well, where we have 1, 1 plus 2 to the power of 19, 2, 2 plus 2 to the power of 19. In fact, let me show, let me prove it, that it works really well. Let's pull up idle here again. I know, I'm using it a lot. I have 1 xor, 1 plus 2 to the power of 19, xor, 2, xor, 2 plus 2 to the power of 19. It's 0. Um, okay, I should probably have clarified. Uh, why am I taking the XOR of all of them? Um, and actually, scrap clarifying. This is not the correct thing. This is not what I meant to do. 1 XOR 2, and then 1 plus blah XOR 2, 2 plus 2 to the power of 19 is 3. So they're both the same. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. They're both the same. You got the one, uh, one to the power of two, and you've got the one plus two to the power of nine, or one x or two, and one plus two to the power of nineteen x or two plus two to the power of nineteen. Okay, so let's go back here and continue and finish this off. So the four works, but suppose suppose we add right here this three in, and another one. What we would end up having is, let me, let me make sure that I'm doing the right one, what we would end up having is 3 plus 2 to the power of 19, but now we have 1 19 bit, 2 19 bit, 3 19 bit, 1 x or 1 x or 1, and this is just like technically 2 to the power of 19, x or 2 to the power of 19, x or 2 to the power of 19, is going to equal 2 to the power of 19. That's a problem. We don't want that. So what are we going to do? We're going to figure out how can we avoid this. Instead of 2 to the power of 19, because we can't just keep it as 3. We've got to change that. Instead of 2 to the power of 19, what if we made it 2 to the power of 20? Well, now we've avoided the 2 to the power of 19's issue, but we've, we've got a, a wild 2 to the power of 20 out there. So let's add 2 to the power of 20 here. Well, now everything checks out. Now everything checks out and it all works. So this is the general gist of the solution that I actually did in contest. The solution I actually did in contest, let me just walk over it quickly here. Um, I read in all of the, uh, or, or I, I read in the integer n and I initialized my vector um, where I said v of for i equals one, i is less than n, i plus equals two, v of i equal to j plus plus, and j is one. Um, and so this essentially, instead of setting these ones to be 1, 2, and 3, I set this to be 1, 2, and 3. That's all I did. It's just the opposite side. And then I said v of i is equal to v of i plus 1 plus 1 to the 1 bit shifted 28 times, which is essentially 2 to the power of 28. So instead of using 19, I used 28 just to be safe. And then I said if n over 2% 2, 2, and what this means is if um, we have an odd number of even slots, then all I did, all I did was I said v of 0 plus equals 1 bit shifted to uh, 29 minus 1 bit shift 28. And so that's essentially doing this plus 2 to the power of 20 minus 2 to the power of 19 after there's already a 2 to the power of 19. So I, I originally set this to be 2 to the power of 19. And all I do there is just say plus 2 to the power of 20 minus 2 to the power of 19. And so this will cancel and this will cancel. And then I add 1, uh, 29. A 1 bit shift to 29 times, which is 2 to the power of 29, right here. And then I output it. And so that gives me all correct. But there is a much, much easier solution to this, and it's honestly mind-boggling that it works. And it relies on something pretty, pretty stupidly simple. So let's take a look. So suppose that we had a valid solution. In our case, a valid solution might look like, let me just erase this over here. Um, what, can we even do this with 1, 2, 3? This is going to be 0. No, we can't do that with 1, 2, 3. Um, a valid solution would look like 2, 0, 4, 3, 5. Okay? Um, now what I want you to notice, and I did this earlier on accident, what, it, what happens if I take the XOR of all the values? 
In a valid solution, I know that the 2xor4xor5 XOR is going to equal the 0xor3. Uh, oops, 2xor4xor5 XOR is going to equal to 0xor3. Right? I know that, and I know that for a fact. Oh, I've switched them around. Oops. It still works out, so thank God. Um, but when I when I XOR all of them together, it's the same as XORing 2, 4, 5, and then XORing 0, 3, and then XORing the results together. So that's going to be 3 XOR 3, which is 0. Let's test it out for some other ones. Oh, and you couldn't see the idle that entire time. Oops, so let me just show it here. Um, 2 XOR 4 XOR 5, 0 XOR 3, and 3 XOR 3. Um, and so if we tried it out with 4, 1, 2, 12, 3, 8, we'd see that. 4 XOR 1, XOR 12, XOR 2, XOR 3, XOR 8 is 0. And if you take a look through it, if you try and check all of them, you'll find they all XOR in total to 0. So what if we did this? What if we initialized all of these to be a random value? We initialized n random values. But we didn't quite initialize all of them to random, we initialized just n minus 1 of them to be random, and then set the last one to make the XOR 0. Would that work? Well, for the time being, let's suppose that none of the values that were generated are the same. So for the time being, let's suppose that we generated n distinct, um, n distinct values, or n minus 1 distinct values in this case. So we have 1, 9, 2, 5 as my randomly generated array. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the XOR of all of these, and I'm going to get 15. So now I know that the XOR of everything in this array is equal to 0. So I'm going to say that I know that k is equal to 0. But let's suppose that I consider the, um, I underline these here in orange, and I underline these in teal. So now I know that this k teal, as I'll call it, kt, xor ko for k orange must equal k, since that's the xor of all of them. But we know that k equals 0, so this must equal 0. But we wanted to prove, or we wanted to find an array such that kt equals k0. Well, kt xor k0 equals 0 necessarily implies that kt equals k ko. Um, so kt xor k0, or actually I won't rewrite that, kt xor k0 equals 0 if and only if kt is equal to ko. And so once we've found an array like this that works, we're done. So it's up to us now to try and figure an array that works. So what we, what we want to get started in doing is, actually, I, I'm just realizing this is going to be easier to explain in Python, so let's do it in Python. What we want to do is generate a random array, right? We want to generate a random array, and while we're, in order to generate this, quote, random array, we want to create a function for that. We want to make a function for that. So, to, so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a function called def generate. Um, and all it's going to do is take in an int n, n, right? And so it's going to generate this array. So I have two things here. I have um, prez is equal to set, and um, and this is calculating which ones are present in a set, because sets are faster. And r is equal to just an empty array. So for, oh, and we'll need random, so. Oh, no, I don't want that. For random, right? Okay. And so now what we want to do is we want to go to, let's check. We want to create, or create a for loop. So for i in range n, um, r dot append, or rather, k is equal to random dot randint 1 to the power of 29. Right, and this is setting some bounds, but it's okay. 
if k in pres, um, and actually it will need to do while true. Continue. And then we say r dot append k break return r. And so this will generate our array asymptotically in O of n. Um, the reason for that is there's 2 to the power of 29 values. The probability that we even, even, even hit a collision even once is really low. And let's find out how low it is. To be precise, it's 1 over 2 to the power of 29. That's so low. That is really low, right? Okay, let's say we hit it once. All right, what's the probability of us hitting it 10 times? Out of all the times, what's the probability of us hitting it only? Or out of all the times, I suppose, we don't hit it at all, right? So that means we have 2 to the power of 29. This is going to be pretty complicated, so let me create a function for this, or a quick script for this. We'll say prob is equal to 1 for i in range of 10. Prob times equals 2 to the power of 29 minus i. Oh, wow. Sorry. OK, there we go. And now we do prob um, divided by equals 2 to the power of 29 to the power of 10. Prob. Yeah, so this, this, is, this is the probability that we generate an array without any collisions. I think you can see that it's reasonably high. It's reasonably high. So let's continue on with what we've got now. So we're going to continue, and I'm going to say gen array. Or I'm going to say while true. I don't need the parentheses. I keep forgetting that. I'm also going to define um, n is equal to input of, or int of input, right? So we've got n, r, n, n. And this is all really basic code, really bad code too. This can probably be optimized in a bunch of ways. But I'm showing this in its bad code to show you that this is really, really simple. This is so simple. So now we just gen array of n minus 1. And I'm going to call this r is equal to gen array of n minus 1. And I'm going to say for or in so I'm going to say x is equal to 0 for i and x or for i and r x um x or x equals x x or i if x in r continue for i in r print or actually r dot append x print star r right that's it and break and so quickly 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 let's um I don't know why it's here. Conda deactivate. Conda activate base. Okay. Um, let's do Python eox.py. And we provide it in number. Let's provide it 5. Well, those are odd. Those are very big. You might be wondering. They're very big. Agreed. But let's run Python here. This xor that xor, that xor, that xor, that is zero. It works. Okay, cool. And now we can just just for kicks, just for kicks, let's um, run it again. Except now we have two, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, yeah, and because I don't want to do that, I'm going to reroute it into out.text. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. It didn't even take a second. And we have a second. So we're good to go. So what we'll do is we'll submit this. I'm going to submit this in Python 3. And I'm going to copy all of this and paste it here and submit. Oh, wrong answer on test case one. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's because I forgot to do um, t is equal to int of input while t is greater than zero. Or actually, for i in range of t. Right, so for underscore in range of t. There we go, so that should give us something better. Um, and let's just go here and make sure that it prints out something reasonable into out.text. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Looks like there are no repeats. Okay, so now we can copy everything and try it again. Sorry about that. Forgot the test cases aspect. Wrong answer on test case four. This, this is interesting. Participant answer not a valid. Test case three. Two, three. I can go from zero first. And second, why is it not valid? Because I forgot to add it. <laughs> Sorry, pres dot add. Uh, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Now let's try it one more time. Just one more time, I promise. Um, bit of a hiccup there. Sorry. Accept it. Did you? It's a speed. Five hundred forty-five milliseconds. My original one ran in 46 milliseconds, but keep in mind I was using um, C++. You don't, okay, the thing about this problem is you don't even need a strong random number generator. Even the broken random number generators work. You don't need the Mersenne Twister random number generator. You don't need a fancy one. Anything that generates numbers, even pseudo-randomly, that just generates distinct numbers works. Yeah, so basically that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this video, learned something new, learned both ways to tackle this problem. This was a really, really nice XOR problem, a really strong XOR problem. And I feel like no matter which solution you attempt, you learn something new. So with that, that's, that's basically all I have to say for this video. If you guys have any other videos that you want me to work on, any other problems, let me know down in the comment section below. And I'll catch you all in another video.